The last video I did was these two pieces of basket illusion, just to test. And I quite enjoyed doing them. So I think I want to do another one and I want to make it something useful. I want to try to make a bowl this time. So now I guess I better find a piece of wood to make a bowl from. Well, the first thing I'm going to need is a bowl blank if I'm going to be turning a bowl. I have a log here from my friend George. It's alder. Thank you, George. I've marked here a couple of lines. The pith is in the center of those. I'm going to take it to the bandsaw, cut down on those lines, and then cut some bowl blanks from these side pieces. Let's go over to the bandsaw and do some work. This piece is just under nine inches across. I have an eight and a half inch circle here. I'm gonna find the approximate center. I scratch all, put it down there. And I'm just gonna get a screw and screw this down at that spot. I'm just going to cut around that circle. I just used the bandsaw to shave that off so I'd have a nice flat spot just so it'll sit there and I was able to drill a 3 8 inch hole. That'll be for the woodworm screw. Now let's take it over the lathe and see about making a bowl out of this. I have the woodworm screw in my chuck now and I've turned the speed down to 100 RPM so I can thread it on here. I'm ready to start turning this. I'll be cutting quite a bit of air considering how much is missing here. I'm going to start at 1000 RPM. Even though it's a little off balance, I don't think it's too bad. And I'll be using a half inch bowl gouge. This wood is very, very dry. It's making for some real tough cutting. I think I'm going to step back to the 3 8 gouge. It might do a nicer job. It's doing a much nicer job, all right. Boy, there's some huge splinters coming off of this, though. Of 
going to flatten this off now and create a tenon that I can use when I reverse chuck it. I'm going to step this up to 2000 RPM now, see if I can get a cleaner cut here. cut there at all. Try this one more time. This one spot really wants to be a problem. I'm going to want a 1 and 5 8 inch tenon. So I've set my dividers to half of that. 13 16 I'm going to set the right leg directly on center and then use the left leg to describe the line. I'm going to use my parting tool to define the edge of that. take off some of the wood here just to give the tenon some space. Very bad splintering and tear out here. I sure hope I can get rid of that without destroying the whole bowl to get to that point. This grain looks like it's much more coarse than I was expecting, so I'm hoping it's going to be fine enough that the beading tools will work on it because they will not work on just any wood. But there's a way to go yet before I'm at that point. Take a little more off here. I'm still getting some splinters. I'm going to start putting the beads on now. Right down here there's a pretty good knot or inclusion of some kind. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work so I may have to turn this part away from the bottom up to here. We'll check it out. I'm going to start with the 3 16 beading tool. I'm going to stay a little bit inside from the edge and trim that off later. And then the rest of the beads will be done with 1 8 inch beading tool. I'm going to put a link in the description box below this video to the first basket illusion that I did and then you'll have better instruction on what I'm doing with these tools. On this one I'm just going to go ahead and do the job.
on the previous basket illusion I used cardstock like this to put in the grooves and I'm going to do that again when I destroy an edge I will just cut it off with the scissors have a fresh edge and carry on I'm turning this at 2000 rpm I'm going to turn the inside of the bowl. I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge and I'll be turning at 2000 RPM. want to see how deep I actually am. Oh, I've got a long ways to go yet. I think the depth is right where I want it, so I'm just going to sand this. I want to put the beads in now, and I need to have my beading tool square across the tool rest, because if it's curved out like this, I'll have the corner coming on to the wood. So after I get as far as I can on this, I may have to change it to a curved tool rest.
I have changed to a curved tool rest. But the curve does not match the bowl. And the part where I'm going to be using the tool rests is quite a ways from the bowl. Not sure how well this is going to work, but I won't know till I try, will I? I've made a curve on the outside edge of this cardstock that almost matches perfectly the curve in the bowl. Now I'm going to turn this up at 3000 RPM and put this in here to burn the lines. Doesn't take long. seems that matching the curve is not that important, as long as there's a curve there that I can stick in the groove. So I'm going to complete these burn lines now. David had suggested using oak edge banding to try using that for some of these burned lines. Now the stuff I have has glue on one side, so I've scraped off as well as I can. And I'm just going to do a test here and see how well this will work. And it looks to me like David's right, that does a very nice job. It's making a thick burn line, so it'll be easier to get in there and not have the pens put ink where I don't want it. I'm going to continue and try doing all of them with this banding. Thank you for that tip, David. It not only worked well, it worked much more quickly. I'm using the indexing jig I got from Ali Sam Engineering again. I'm going to draw a line every 12 degrees, which is every four stops around the center ring. This is my jig to draw the lines. Lines up right on center. I just want to draw lines around on the beads. Across the top of the bowl, and then the beads on the outside. And I'll move this four spots, lock it in, and draw the lines again. And I'll continue to do that until I have the lines drawn all the way around inside and outside of the bowl. I'll come back and show you the results and the next step. I have the lines drawn in here, and then I printed out with the graph paper maker what this would look like so I could start to color in between the lines and decide what I want for a pattern. And I realized I think these are just too big. So I printed a second one at 6 degrees instead of the 12, and that's much better 
but it came to me that I really don't have to burn every one of these lines bet uh, between the beads on the vertical. So if I want to make something a little more intricate, I can do it at three degrees. And that will allow me to color in whichever one of these I want and only burn the vertical lines where I need to. And the others I can just leave alone. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put in lines at three degrees. See what that looks like and I'll be back when that's finished because that's going to take a while to show you the results. I'm hoping that these lines will show up well both on this outside view, on the larger view and on the second perspective camera on the inside. Now I've got them all drawn. I'm ready to start deciding what I want for a pattern. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start using some crayon pencils I suppose and try to draw in some kind of design that I can then transfer to the turning. I've drawn up this pattern. Ignore the colors. The colors I use will be different. I'm a little colorblind so I wanted to use colors that are real obvious here. So now I'm going to have to sit down and take a lot of time to color this in. My next step now is to burn all these beads with this 1 8 inch bead burning tip. And this is going to take a really long time. So I'll do the burning and then I'll come back. Well, I had fully expected that coloring this was going to take a long time, but I didn't realize how long this was going to take to burn it. I can see some real differences in the quality. I've still got a lot to learn, and I can tell the difference from where I started to where I finished. Anyway, this took a little over three hours, just to warn you in case you want to try this yourself. Now I'm going to go on with starting the coloring process. Now I totally expect this coloring to take a long time. I'm going to be referring to my diagram. I've got zero degrees marked here and I'm just going to mark this as my zero point. So then I'll constantly refer. I've got two reds for instance and I'm going to use a pencil and just put a dot on each of those spots and carry on and mark the others that are going to be red to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. I won't start coloring until I have all the places marked. These four, for instance, are going to be black, so I'm going to leave those unmarked. Carry on with marking the red spots. I'm using what's called a deep scarlet red. I'll just see what this color looks like here quickly. That's going to show up well. I have the inside I think finished. I've decided to leave these green lines off. I think it might just get a little too busy. I kind of like it the way it is right now. So now I'm going to burn the vertical lines on the outside. This by the way took me about four hours and I found quickly that letting your mind wander just a little bit can cause problems. You end up putting a dot on a square where you don't want it and it's quite a mess to try to clean up. So you have to concentrate, something I'm not real good at. Anyway, I'm going to burn these lines now and then I'll be back.
Well, I have the grid all the way around the outside. That took me three hours. Now I'm ready to start coloring. And I've got the first red decoration like this. The pencil marks are on there. So I can see where I'm going to do the coloring. And I'll do that first thing. I'll start with the red brush tip. Now that does not let me get down real close to the other beads, but I have a super fine tip to use when I get to that point. This is just to do the center of them. That takes care of the red, and I think I'm going to leave the inside this natural color. I kind of prefer that to the black that I have in here. I hope that gave a better look at using the super fine tip to get in there. With all of these red designs finished all the way around, now it's time to start working on this blue ring. That goes on two, two rows of beads right in the center between these. So I'm going to use the brush tip blue first and I can just go all the way around in the center getting both of the beads at the same time. Then color in the bead most of the way down and I'll finish it up with the super fine tip. Now that this blue band is finished all the way around, it's time to do these curves. And to do those, I just go right beside the lowest ring on this top red design. Put one there, then go down one and over one, down one and over one, and etc. until I get to the very bottom last ring. And I'll do on the same on the other side and continue all the way around. I'm just going to start by marking them so that I don't end up on a wrong one. Come to think of it, I better do that with pencil. I don't trust myself that far. Now I'll go back and I'll do the same on the other side. First one done, on to the next.
I have all the coloring finished both inside and outside. Now I'm going to just burn straight lines in line with these lines that are coming down from the inside right around and then I will color the entire thing red. I'm using a skew tip for burning this. I've scribed lines with the skew all the way across, all the way around, and now I'm going to color the entire top of the rim red. Now you may have been wondering why I left the tenon on. Well, it's because if I needed to remount it in the chuck, I was going to be able to do so. And now I'm just putting in the coal jaws to remove the tenon and clean up the bottom. This, I'm sure I don't need to say, would be a really bad time to have a catch. I'll be turning at about 750 RPM. That's about as fast as I dare turn with coal jaws. I've got a bit of an inclusion of some kind here. I know it does not go through to the inside, so I'm hoping I can turn that away without going too much further. I don't want to take any more than just this bottom bead off at the very maximum. I think that'll do. I think I'm just going to sand this real good now. I have sanded the bottom to 400 grit. I put three circles in here for a little decoration. And I drilled a recess for my logo coin. So now I'm going to glue that in with CA glue, sign and date the bottom, and then I'll be back to show you the results. I have it signed and dated. Now I'm going to use my turntable with my lathe to spin this and I'm going to spray it with this Krylon Satin Clear Color Master it's called. See how that works. I just wanted to put on a thin coat. I might do multiple coats, but I don't want anything sagging and running. Well, I'm quite happy with this. Is it perfect? No, but I never make anything that's perfect. There's always little flaws, little mistakes. But I think I've improved from my test. The first thing I did, I enjoyed this. I kind of like the design I came up with. And I think I probably will do some more of these at some point. So if you enjoyed this, click the like button. Let me know I'm doing something right. If you didn't like it, leave me a comment. Tell me what you don't like, what I should do better. Maybe you have some suggestions. And if you decide to do one of these, please send me a picture. I'd like to see what you come up with. It's fun. A little tedious, you might think, but time went pretty fast. I stopped keeping track of the amount of time I put into this because it was starting to scare me. 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for stopping in. Remember to subscribe and have a great day in your shop. Remember to be safe. Stop in again. Bye-bye now.